Hey, what's up, everyone? Today we're going to be talking about time and time manipulation in After Effects. And for this demonstration, I grabbed three different video files so we can work with and see how we can manipulate time inside of After Effects. And so let's start with this first video that I downloaded is a stock footage and this is just a video of a boat uh, pretty much going through the water and that's about it and if you look at it it has normal speed and so part of the speed will be to know the information of a footage or a video and in this particular case we have that video that has 30 frames per second and that information is visible on the projects panel which will have all the assets inside and inside of these assets or inside of this panel we have a bunch of different information for each one of the assets uh, so the one we're currently working on and if we look at the frame rate tab the frame rate is telling us that it's at 30 frames per second and it, uh, it has a total length of 12 seconds and 17 frames because we know that um, the video itself was shot at 30 frames per second every second that passes in real time for us the video is producing a total of 30 frames or 30 pictures which make a total of one second now if you wanted to manipulate that you want to know the amount of frames that you have per second which gives you an idea of how much you can actually manipulate that now of course there's no limit to it because there's so many tools that allow you to manipulate things even beyond what would be the normal control so there is three different assets here as far as frame rate. Uh, okay, so going back to the preview panel. And this was shot at 30 frames per second and it looks like we have real time as we play it. But if this was some type of uh, scene that we wanted to give it a different feeling to it we want to make it fit more in maybe an action scene then we probably want to speed up the speed right uh, we want to make it faster if it's something that maybe uh, we want to make it some type of memory uh, apart from the visuals we can probably slow down time and, and not just give it more of a different feeling it could be a warm feeling uh, it could be a cold feeling depending on how much you change the uh, aspect of a footage obviously it would be the emotion that it will express but the control of time allows you to change the feeling of a picture and so the first actual tool that we have is what is called a time stretch and I have a composition here where I just dragged the footage. Actually, let me delete that one more time. One way to make a comp is simply to drag a footage into this uh, movie icon right here. And that will make a composition to the exact length of whatever footage you are using, which is a total of 12 seconds and 14 and 16 frames. Now, First tool, time stretch, there's a couple of different ways that we can apply these effects to a layer and the first one would be to right click and then we go to time and in here we have the different types of uh, controls that we have over time. So enable time remapping, time reverse layer, time stretch, freeze frame and freeze on last frame. So this is one way to get to any of these functions. We can also select the layer and then go to menu, layer, time. So for now I'm gonna select time stretch. And once I left click that, a new window pops up. And in this window, it's asking us uh, 
how we want to manipulate this particular information. So right now it has a stretch factor of 100, meaning it has, it's a one-to-one. -one. So as the footage is, it's 100% the speed that it's supposed to have. So a time stretch, if I want to make it any different, you're stretching the time by a percentage. So if I wanted to make this on a 50 uh, factor, it pretty much cuts it in half. So it makes it, it, uh, it will play that all that information in only 50% of the actual time from the original source. So once I apply 50, the change of length goes to six seconds and nine frames. If I change this to 25, this the length of this is going to drop even half of this. Three seconds and five frames. I'm going to leave it at 50. And there's another option that we can select, which is the hold in place. And this will change from what point is affected so uh, um we'll go by we'll go through them to show what uh, that means so if i leave in layer in point and i hit okay wherever that layer starts that layer is going to continue to start right there but as you can see now it's only half seconds and a few frames so now we have all that extra space so that's going to play at half uh, well, pretty much at twice the speed, right? It it will play the entire information in only half of that time. Okay, so I'll do that again. Right click, time, time stretch, and the information is maintained, so it stays at 50, and it's giving us those uh, that same duration because the information of the file is still the same. Nothing has really been changed. There's been changes to it but it's remembering all those changes. At this point, if I select, I leave it at 50. No, in order to make a change, again, I need to change that value. So now I'll set it to 25, and I'll select the uh, layer out point, which would be where the layer ends currently. So if I hit OK, now we're going to have... Uh, the start of this video around second uh, two and three, or maybe after three. So I'll hit OK. So right after three, that's where our layer starts now. It maintained the position for the end of the layer, but now the start is wherever that change uh, affects. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to play the entire original source and... 25% of the time that it was supposed to have. So once I play it, it goes extremely fast. Okay. Now, one last demonstration with this. Right-click, time, time stretch. And this time, let's go to a 10. And we're going to select current frame. So now instead of maintaining the last uh, frame position or the first frame position, we're maintaining the position of the frame where we currently are. So both ends are gonna stretch, uh, are gonna compress to the inside uh, of that frame. So if I hit okay, now we have only 10% of the length of the original source, but the entire information in that time. So if I play it, it's going to play extremely fast. And if at any point in time I don't want any of those outcomes and I want to change it, at this time let's go to layer, time, time stretch, and I'll just type in 100 again. And I'll play OK. Now we have the layer back to its original uh, form, but the time has been affected because we were changing the in and out points. So I'll just drag this back to the beginning. So that's the first uh, way to change or manipulate the time, which would be a time stretch. 
Okay, for the next demonstration, we're going to use this footage. Uh, this footage is only 23, uh, 2398 basically, so 24 frames per second. Uh, unlike the 30, this one has 4 frames less every second. So I'll make a composition with that. And you can see that this footage already is slowed down. So the footage, as we got the footage, it's not in real time. That those flames are not real time. They are burning with slow motion. So we already have slow motion, right? So a lot of times you might get uh, footage that is already like this. Can we make it slower? So if the job requires making it slower, there has to be a way. That's what all these tools are for. But the footage is already slow. Okay, but the second manipulation uh, that we should talk about would be reversing the time. So if we select the layer, and then go to layer, time, time reverse layer. That will automatically just flip the time of a layer. So instead of going forward, it's going to go backwards. Now it's going to look like uh, the flames are going down instead of going up. So that's uh, unnatural movements, just going back in time. And then if at this point, because we already reverse the time, we wanted to make changes beyond that, we can still apply a layer time and a time stretch, which was what we were doing. If we open this, now we can see that the time values or the percentage of the stretch factor is negative 100. So if I go, if I change this back to 100, it will automatically play normal. So as you can see, we are achieving the exact same results through two different methods. I'll undo that to leave it uh, in reverse for now. But you can see that we also have a couple of shortcuts for these. So if we wanted to reverse the time, we can go to timer and reverse layer and the keyboard shortcut is control alt R. Okay, so another very important tool that we have is the ability to freeze a frame. So if at this point, for some reason, I wanted to freeze the frame here, it's already in reverse. I'll just right click, go to time, and then freeze frame. Once I do that, we can see that there is a new value down here, which is a time remap, and we have a keyframe here. And now that frame is frozen throughout the entire 36 seconds. So if I go to layer, time, time stretch, now it says that we are still at negative 100. So if we change that to negative 50 and we leave the layer endpoint, so now the layer in is no longer this because After Effects is still remembering that the layer in is at the end of the current status. So this is the endpoint. We still made it smaller, but it's remembering that it should stay on that one frame. So at this point, that second action was sort of pointless because it just shortened the length of a layer and we can simply do that just by left clicking and dragging some of these ends right and that way a layer is now playing only for that specific time so i'll, I'll left click and undo that and now we have the footage playing again so if this composition was instead of 35 frames i'm sorry 35 seconds it would 60 uh it would if it was 50 seconds now we have some extra space at the end so if i wanted to play the entire video and then at the very end just maintain the last frame i can just right click go to time and freeze on last frame 
once I left click that, you will see that the video will play and it'll stay like that because we have to extend the length of our video. So now it does play and because we extended the length, now it will play continuously on the last frame for the remaining of the time. However, when we freeze on the last frame, we can see that now we have two keyframes. So unlike when we froze the frame, we have two. Um, that's because there is new information being applied or new values. So I'll unclick that. For now, it's still going on reverse. So I'll go to time, uh, time stretch, and I'll just type in 100. So this is at its natural state, okay? Uh, the next way we can manipulate a time in a layer would be to a would be to enable the time remapping. And enabling the time remapping is basically what the all other tools are doing. So if I left click, time, enable enable time remapping. Now I have two keyframes, and these two keyframes are basically a start and an end. And in between those two keyframes, as you know, there is value. So it has all that information that is in between. However, if I wanted now to change the length or the speed of any of this, I can do that by cell. So if I left click and drag the last keyframe and I bring it, let's say halfway in, I'll play this from the beginning. Now it's no longer in some type of slow motion. It's playing close to real time. Not, not, not necessarily that that is real time. I think we can speed this up. And that's, let's see, probably a little more. I think that looks a little bit more like, uh, like real fire, probably there. Something like that, right? If we were trying to go for real fire. But as you can see, once it passes this second keyframe, it stays frozen on the last frame, which is uh, that other option that we have. So we can do that also by enabling the time remapping. And it will obviously go off frame as soon as that layer ends. We can expand this. And now we have a layer of... 50 seconds. If I wanted to play that video for the entire thing, I can just grab this one and send it all the way to the end. And now I have a, an exact 50 second um, video. And as you can see, it's basically like making two different handles, one from the end and one from the beginning. And then as you compress them, um, that's a, sort of like a visual representation. However, we can make as, <clears throat> however, as you know, wherever there's keyframes, there can be more information applied to that. So if I, uh, and if I create another keyframe, and I do have a video where I just talk about keyframes and uh, the most basic information about keyframes, which is just how these keyframes hold information of that particular value. So. As of right now, there's information in between here and here, and the composition plays at the same speed throughout. But because there's a third keyframe, we can now make changes in between those two times. So wherever I move this to, if I move it to the right, it's going to make this part faster and this part slower. Because I'm stretching both of those parts, one in and one out. So I'll drag this to the right. And now this left part is going to be super slow. And the right part is going to be slightly faster. And if I wanted to flip that and just make the end slightly faster, I'm sorry, the end slower and the beginning faster. Okay. So now that we know that we can manipulate the time in those ways, 
we should talk about what we mentioned at the beginning, which is frame rate. Frame rate would be our base knowledge or idea of how much we can manipulate a footage. It's not necessarily true, as I mentioned at the beginning, because there's other tools, but the stock tools inside of After Effects can only allow us to go so far. And for now, we have three different footages, one with 24 frames per second, which is this one. So if I change the composition, composition settings, I change the time from this to, let's say, 2 minutes and 50 seconds. And now I make this even way slower. Now we're going to see something that kind of affects the image completely, which is that jig jittery movement. And that's because there is only certain amount of pictures that can be played in a second. So, uh, oops. If I go to my layer, if I go to my timeline and I go one frame to the right and then another one, you can see in my time indicator, I'll control and right arrow click to go a couple of frames forward. Now in time, I am in frame four, but nothing has changed. That's because there's no information to fill that gap. So our first frame changes on frame five. So chances are that the next five frames are still gonna be this particular frame. So one, two, three, four, yes. Every five, uh, every five frames we are changing the picture so in time every five frames the picture is changing so that's why we see that uh, very slow motion type of movement however after effects has a particular tool to change the outcome of this particularly and that would be the frame blending option which is located um, depending on where we are, what type of mode we're looking at, if we're looking at the blending modes or if we're looking at the, or if we're looking at this other panel. In this panel, we have a couple of different options, but the one we wanna focus on for this particular work is the frame blending. So as soon as I turn that on, instead of having the actual picture change every five frames, now we have information in between all that. So if I, that's my very first frame, frame zero. If I control right click, there's change in that, right? And uh, there's more change. And as you can see, it will kind of try to make something with that, right? So it's grabbing the first and the second frame and blending between that, making something that kind of fits in between those two frames so it's literally making four frames out of two and if i play it we get that motion it still kind of looks a bit weird right but if you think about it the time is slowed down so much this footage was already slow but the actual look it's it's a little bit blurry so if you were going for something like that, like a little bit blurry with a lot of um, motion blur, that's a really good option. But there's two different kinds of blending modes. We have the frame mix blending mode and then we have the pixel motion blending mode. And right now we're using the frame mix, but if I change this to pixel motion, I'll go frame by frame to kind of demonstrate that. Now, it kind of is not making that motion blur effect, and we are already at second one. So this looks completely different as far as that blurriness that you get with the uh, mix frames. So what this one is doing is, is grabbing pixels 
instead of grabbing a frame and blending the frames, it grabs pixels from each frame and it tries to make an actual frame that doesn't blend, so it's not blending them together. It's trying to make an actual frame from that information. And at this point, is mostly the time it's pretty stretched. That footage is pretty, pretty stretched. So as you can see, we start to get a little bit of a uh, better outcome with that blending mode on if we don't stretch it that much. Obviously, there is areas where we still lose that information. And for that, there is other tools. If you want to learn more about that, like slowing down time, you probably want to want to look into third-party plugins. But to get this type of outcome just in After Effects is pretty good so far. So that's because this footage is 24 frames per second. If we had a footage, which in this particular case we do, that is 60 frames per second, and now I go to composition, composition settings, I can see that this is at 1920 by 1080. So at HD with 60 frames per second with the duration of five seconds. If I play this, this even has audio. I'm gonna turn off the audio for now. And I have my resolution a bit down. But there we can see that the movement, that the footage is five seconds. So if I go to composition, composition settings, and instead of five seconds, I make this 15 seconds, that is three times the length of the, comp of the footage as it is. So I'll just go to time, enable time remapping, uh, for me, time remapping is the best way to for me to manipulate time unless I'm going specifically to freeze the frame or freeze the last frame. Then it might be easier to just left click one of those options. But uh, usually I start with enable time remapping to make any changes. Just, just seems a little bit easier for me. And so now I slowed down the footage pretty that uh, drastically so again about three times the length that the footage originally had so because this is a little bit far you can see that even though we stretch this out a lot it's still playing pretty good and that is because now we're going to do the same thing that we did in the other one i'll press control First frame, one to the right, that's one frame, two, three. That's because we have an actual frame every three frames in time. So unlike the other one, which was every five frames in real time, this one, after stretching it so much, we have one frame change every three real-time frames. So if I turn now the... For this particular case, I probably would go for this uh, m mix, the, uh, the blend the frames, because it could probably give us some type of motion blur. But if I go to the pixel option, we can see that in this area is maintaining the pixels from those two frames and it's pushing them down and then they just kind of disappear right of course we are very zoomed in oops and so if i play this and it's it's full extent we can see where it's gonna start to create some issues of course we are stretching this a lot but playing it in speed or real time those imperfections hide a little better just because we're blending the frames okay so those are the basics of time and time manipulation inside of after effects
I hope you learned something from it and it helps you in your journey. I'll see you in the next one.